uh, the lectures. Uh, last week we finished up to uh, here, this uh, slice. Uh, I don't know why uh, my uh, screen is showing uh, the face of these students. Uh, OK, uh, last week we finished up to here, uh, 15 or uh, slide number 15. Uh, the flowchart of uh, water treatment plants. Uh, actually, uh, this flowchart uh, we used to mention once in uh, the first chapter. Okay, in the first chapter. Uh, in here, uh, there are uh, 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 the process unit operations, that list of the uh, unit operations and uh, unit processes. Uh, we normally used uh, to treat uh, water. Uh, in this uh, slide, if we used uh, the upland water, so there are uh, several uh, processes uh, required uh, to purify water. But if we use the lowland uh, water, uh, also same, but uh, uh, similar to the upland water, uh, starting with the uh, screening, understanding and uh, followed by the coagulations and flocculations, uh, sedimentations, uh, rapid uh, sand filter, and end up with the disinfections. But for the upland water, uh, maybe the disinfection is not required. But if we use ground water, ground water is nothing but just uh, disinfect uh, water before used. Uh, coagulations, uh, flocculation, uh, sedimentations, rap, uh, rapid sand filters are not required. So just uh, finish uh, 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 by the uh, disinfections before distributing to the uh, consumer's house or to the community. So if the uh, ground water is a hot water, uh, some extra uh, steps may be required. Uh, for example, lamster dust softening, uh, we apply a lamps to precipitate uh, calcium and magnesium. That is why uh, the next uh, we need to provide the sedimentation tanks and uh, we still need uh, rapid sand, uh, rapid cavity filters and uh, of course the disinfections before distributing the water to the community. So if it's the hot water, our process will be a little bit more complicated. Uh, mostly the chemical, uh, they are the chemical processed. Uh, these are the uh, unit operations and uh, unit processes uh, used in a water treatment uh, system. Uh, there are a number of uh, unit operations and unit processes. So as uh, I just want to emphasize again, uh, unit operation, it's the unit that uh, normally refers to uh, the units that um, uh, apply a physical process to remove the contaminants. But the unit processes, uh, it's uh, the units that uh, apply a biological process or the chemical process to uh, uh, remove uh, the contaminants. Basically, unit process uh, is uh, 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 or refers to uh, the uh, process, uh, the units that apply uh, chemicals and uh, biological reactions uh, to. Uh, 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 remove the uh, contaminants uh, from water, but unit operations uh, uh, depends on uh, the physical characteristics of the contaminants. Uh, that is why uh, only physical process is applied. Uh, so these are uh, the flow diagrams. So things like this we normally call the flow diagrams, uh, starting from the first uh, unit operation. Uh, followed by the seconds, the thirds, and uh, end up with the uh, treated water. So this kind of uh, figures we normally call the unit, uh, uh, sorry, the flow diagrams. Uh, sometimes we add the fluoride. Sometimes uh, we make up the deficiencies. Uh, if the uh, raw water uh, doesn't contain uh, some uh, fluoride, uh, we want to promote uh, the uh, uh, healthy of uh, the uh, fits, or uh, maybe uh, we can add some uh, fluorides. 
but uh, it depends on uh, the raw water sources. In Thailand, uh, additions of the food or rice are not required because uh, we already have a lot in uh, raw water resources in most part of the northern regions. That is why additions of the food or rice at the end is not required. Okay, uh, but sometimes we have to add uh, the oxygen. Uh, we have to aerate the water uh, just to uh, remove the uh, uh, taste and odor or uh, remove the ions and manganese uh, and oxidize uh, some uh, uh, contaminants, some uh, reducing agents in water. So and in that case, uh, pre aerations may be required, uh, especially for the ground waters, but not for the surface water, as I mentioned in uh, the exams uh, questions. Uh, another process which may be required uh, at the very beginnings of uh, the uh, treatments, uh, that is the uh, pre coordination uh, Chlorine may be applied in uh, very first uh, uh, process or uh, may be applied again in the disinfections. So uh, for the chlorines, if we apply it in the very first or the very beginnings of uh, the treatment uh, process, uh, this uh, uh, process we normally call a pre collination uh, pre collination But if we apply uh, the chlorine uh, as the disinfectants in the last unit uh, before distributing water to the uh, consumers. Uh, in this case, we normally call the post collination So the major uh, objectives of the pre collination is just to oxidize some reducing agents, as I mentioned, uh, mostly uh, just to remove uh, irons and mechanisms uh, so that uh, interactions uh, between irons and mechanisms with the chlorines uh, will cause the precipitations because it will change the uh, oxidation reduction conditions in water. Uh, additions of choline uh, probably kill uh, some uh, algae. Uh, uh, they can actually prevent the growth of algae in uh, 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 unit operations or uh, unit processes uh, 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 in several unit uh, operations and unit process, especially in a war of the uh, sedimentation tank. Uh, additions of choline also help to reduce the colors and odor problems, reduce the uh, uh, slime formation. Uh, slums is a kind of um, uh, viscous uh, liquid uh, similar. Uh, it's a kind of the viscous uh, liquid uh, stick it on uh, the walls, the pipe walls, or uh, the uh, uh, sedimentation wall, uh, and any other places in uh, water treatment uh, systems, it's originated from the microorganisms. Some kind of bacteria, they are able to produce this uh, slum, and this will create the problems, uh, especially uh, once slum is formed, it may release uh, some uh, organic compound, which uh, create the odors problems to uh, the water. That is why if we add a choline, so it helps to prevent the growth of the uh, slum. So these are uh, the uh, objectives of the pre -collinations. But anyway, uh, the pre collination is not uh, the major objectives is not to kill the germ. OK, it's not uh, to disinfect uh, the uh, uh, microorganisms. Uh, we just add some certain amounts of choline to kill some uh, algae and some uh, bacteria, but not disinfect are the germs. So we don't add too much. So we add some certain amount just uh, to fulfill these objectives. If our uh, water contains uh, some of these uh, contaminants, but if there are no irons and manganese, if there are no uh, colors and odor problems, pre collination may not be required. OK, so pre collination. So why we have to add uh, when we have to add. So we normally inject uh, chlorine uh, uh, in a high uh, dosage, uh, 2 to 5 uh, milligrams per liter. Milligrams per liter, it's equivalent to ppm. So you may have heard about the ppm. ppm, it's the part per million. 
uh, part per million, it's equivalent to milligrams per liter. So if you don't believe, you can uh, prove it later. But anyway, uh, we keep uh, the colines uh, at a high dosage. So this is uh, enough to uh, oxidize uh, some uh, reducing agents, uh, get it off uh, the colors and odor, and uh, prevent uh, that's our slums formations and kill, of course, kill some algae. So uh, this amount is actually very uh, similar to the amount that we normally apply it to the uh, swimming pools. The further swimming pools, uh, at least uh, we need like a 5 ppm. But for the normal water, uh, the tapped water, uh, the chlorine residue uh, should be around 0.2 uh, to maximum maybe 2 milligrams per liter only. It doesn't have to be like a 4 or 5 milligrams per liter. That is too high for the tapped water. But here, as it is for the precollination, so we use for many purposes, sometimes we need a higher dosage. But anyway, for a good quality water like gar water, it's not required. Uh, we don't have to add the colines. Um, uh, this precollination uh, should not be used as a substitute of the post collination. Anyway, the post collination or the disinfection is uh, must be there. Uh, we have to keep this unit because uh, uh, additions of the colines uh, we would like to add, and then we want the colline uh, left over in the uh, water uh, until it reached the consumer's house or the point of use. So if we apply it at the very beginning, there will not be anything left because uh, water still have to pass several uh, unit uh, operation and unit processes. Uh, sometimes the mixing, sometimes have to uh, keep it in the uh, uh, sedimentation tank. Sometimes uh, water has to pass through the filters. So there's the possibility that all the colines should be gone. So uh, pre-collination cannot be uh, the only uh, process that we apply the colines in the plants. Post-collination must be there anyway. Uh, for the turbid water, it's not recommended to use the uh, pre-collination. Okay, for the turbid water, if the water is too turbid, then uh, we don't apply it. Chlorine. Uh, uh, okay, in case if you want to kill the germs, uh, pre collination may need much greater quantities of the chlorine than the post collination. Uh, uh, because uh, some certain amount of chlorines maybe react with uh, some uh, contaminants in, in uh, water itself. Uh, actually, this is chapters are uh, although the title is uh, the uh, uh, the title is the um, uh, water treatment process. But in fact, if you look into the contents of this chapter, uh, this should be uh, revised. Uh, this chapter, uh, the chapter title uh, should be like a physical chemical process because in science we are talking uh, in de details about the uh, about the uh, physical and the chemical treatment. So in combination, we normally call a physical chemical process. Okay, so physical chemical process, uh, we apply this process in both water and wastewater treatment. So for wastewater treatments, as I mentioned, uh, we normally classify it into two types, uh, industrial wastewater and domestic wastewater. Uh, for wastewater treatments, we still need a physical chemical process to remove the suspended solids. But once the suspended solids is completely removed, then uh, we only have the organic matters, dissolved organic matters left, so that uh, we apply the biological process to remove the organic matters again. But the details about the biological process we will discuss in the next chapter. So the next chapter, uh, Actually, the title, it should be a, a biological process, but since the biological process is only used for uh, wastewater treatment, that is why 
uh, just to make it corresponding with the uh, requirements uh, from the Council of Engineers. So the next chapter, I just changed to the wastewater treatment uh, process. Uh, but in fact, the details or the contents in the next chapter will be more on the biological process. Similar to this chapter, the details will be more on the uh, physical chemical process. Uh, what are the difference uh, between these two processes? Physical chemical process. So uh, we apply some chemicals to, uh, to uh, modify the characteristic of the uh, of the uh, uh, characteristic of the uh, our contaminants, uh, such a very small or very fine particles. Uh, we will uh, actually uh, add uh, uh, the alarms. Uh, we allow the alarms to to interact uh, with the uh, charge uh, uh, around the surface so that uh, the charge become neutralized. And that is why uh, we can uh, uh, vacuolate and uh, coagulate them to, uh, let them settle in the sedimentation tank. So uh, these are like a, uh, the process we normally do it. Uh, it's a combination between the chemicals and uh, physical process. That is why we call the physical uh, chemical process. So this process, the objectives is mainly to uh, remove the suspended solids. And uh, as we uh, apply the chemicals, so that uh, in terms of the volumes variation, uh, sometimes the flow is high, sometimes the flow is low, all the quality variation uh, in uh, the dry seasons, the turbidity in water is low, but in the wet seasons, uh, there is the mudslides or landslides in the upland areas. Uh, maybe at that time, uh, the turbidity in water uh, were increased. So this is required quality variations. So if uh, the turbidity increased up to like a 3000 uh, NTU, uh, you have to add more uh, chemicals. But if the uh, turbidity is just uh, only 40 to 50 NTU, so we just reduce the amount of chemical used. So in terms of the uh, volumes and qualities variations, we can say that physical chemical, it's easy to adjust. But for the biological, it's very difficult because biological uh, process. So if you really look into the process, so who really drive the process? Uh, the biological process is like this. Uh, organic matters. Organic matters. Uh, we add the oxygens and then we allow the microorganisms to, uh, to uh, degrade the organic substance which come along with the wastewater. And this normally we measure in terms of the BOD. Uh, these organic matters uh, get converted into a carbon dioxide and water molecules, uh, which are the harmless end products of these uh, reactions. So these reactions is actually derived by the uh, bacteria. So bacteria play uh, a role, important role in uh, uh, the degradations of the uh, organic substance. Uh, to uh, becomes the harmless end product. So this will occur in the uh, biological reactor or uh, the aeration tank. Uh, if you uh, come back to uh, the uh, wastewater uh, flow rate. Uh, okay, so we will, we will talk about it in the next few slides. Uh, okay, so for this one, uh, this will happen in the bioreactor. In the bioreactor, we provide the oxygen. Okay, so oxygen is provided. We cultivate the microorganisms inside. And then uh, this microorganism received uh, wastewater from outside. This wastewater contains some the organic matters. So all the uh, reactants are here in this reactor so that uh, these reactions can uh, proceed. OK, so this is a kind of uh, the biological process. So we we'll, we normally carry out these uh, reactions uh, whenever we treat the wastewater because mostly wastewater, the major con uh, constituent is the organic substance. Uh, that is why 
for the wastewater treatments, uh, we apply this process. So the details about the biological process will be discussed in the next chapter. Uh, I'm not sure uh, this is supposed to be a chapter five, right? so next chapter is just chapter six. Removal of the phosphorus. Uh, phosphorus mostly uh, can actually occur by a, using the chemical process. So we add calcium uh, to precipitate uh, the phosphate. So uh, the most effective way to remove the phosphorus is by applying uh, the physical chemical process. For biological process, it is very less, uh, less efficiencies. Uh, we can say that normally uh, it's a zero uh, percentage of uh, removal for the phosphorus by using the biological process. It uh, may be removed, but very little amount. This large production this large production's physical chemical process, we apply uh, uh, rapid and uh, slow mixing and then uh, let it settle in the sedimentation tank. And then we also have like a uh, few thirst. Uh, so the sludge production, so why uh, does this sludge produced? So coagulation, flocculations, and after that we are uh, allow the flock settles in the sedimentation tank. So uh, mostly the sludge generated from uh, the secondary sedimentation tank. And this sludge is normally, uh, in terms of the quantity, is very high. Uh, in one day, uh, water treatment plants may produce uh, a huge amount of the sludge. Uh, some plants, the larger plants, may produce up to uh, uh, several uh, tons of uh, the sludge, uh, over uh, 10 uh, tons of the sludge for the larger plants. That is why we have to handle the sludge properly. Uh, for the unstabilized sludge, we prefer the stable or stabilized sludge. Uh, uh, a stable means uh, the sludge is exist in the forms that will not be uh, resuspended, resuspended again, or uh, will not uh, disintegrated to become a small uh, objects and get uh, suspended back into the water bodies again. That is called a, a stabilized sludge. For the unstabilized, just like uh, the jar test. So if you are doing the jar test. Uh, unfortunately, this semester uh, you were not able to do in the labs, but uh, at the end of this semester, I'm not sure about uh, the plans, uh, the uh, study plans uh, uh, in the uh, uh, a week before the examinations uh, periods. Uh, as I have heard it from uh, many people, uh, they say that uh, if it is necessary, uh, seven or to ten days before the midterm exams period. So we are allowed to conduct the experiments in the labs, but I'm not sure whether uh, we can do it in reality or not. But I'm not, and and I'm also not sure whether uh, you will be able to come to uh, the universities or not at that time. So. Uh, if it is possible, then you can have a look how uh, we carry out the chart test uh, experiment. So for the chart test, uh, uh, normally uh, we add uh, alums, we determine the optimum uh, dosage, and these uh, alums uh, will precipitate. We cause the precipitation of the uh, uh, five particles so that these five particles will accumulate at the bottoms of the chamber. But once the pH change, or uh, once we uh, just litter uh, disturb uh, the or creates uh, little turbulence in uh, in a jar, uh, those uh, sedimented uh, sludge uh, may be uh, disintegrated and become a smaller uh, particles and resuspends again. So this kind of uh, sludge we call it, they are not. Are stabilized. We only want the stabilized sludge, but we don't want uh, unstabilized uh, the sludge. Some sludge, just the pH of the water change, so it's resolubilized, resolubilized again.
So get uh, dissolve it against. So this kind of uh, sludge we don't want. So for the physical chemical process, mostly the sludge are unstabilized, but for the biological process, the sludge are mostly stabilized. So we will talk about the sludge treatments and management again in the next, in the chapters after, in the next two chapters. Uh, for the operations and maintenance cost, biological process is very really cheap. You don't need to add any extra chemicals except just providing the oxygen. Uh, but uh, for the chemical, uh, physical chemical process, we really need the chemicals. We need to add uh, the chemicals. Okay, so the amount of the chemical added, uh, we have to add it continuously. A large amount of chemicals, we have to add it in uh, a daily production. That is why we have to uh, spend money for the uh, uh, alums and uh, probably other co coagulants uh, just to uh, 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 to be used as the uh, 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 substance uh, uh, to reduce the uh, uh, suspended uh, particles, colloidal particles, so the five particles. Uh, these are the uh, water treatments. Uh, uh, processed. We essentially divided into uh, three types of the treatments. Uh, the first types of the treatments is the primary treatments. Primary treatments mainly uh, apply only the physical characteristic, only the physical characteristic to remove the uh, uh, the contaminants. Uh, unit operations that applies only the physical characteristic, uh, for example. Uh, screen, screen. This is the only unit operation in this uh, flow diagram that apply the uh, physical process to remove the big objects from uh, water. Okay, so this is a kind of uh, uh, preliminary treatment uh, process. So preliminary treatment process, the objective is to uh, remove the uh, big objects by solely uh, based on the uh, physical uh, process or uh, based on the uh, physical characteristic of the contaminants. But if we add some chemicals, if we uh, apply uh, some uh, biological process or chemical process, so this will be considered as the secondary treatments because chemical process and biological process, uh, we apply uh, 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 so that uh, the dissolved uh, uh, solids or the dissolved uh, contaminants uh, will be removed because after the preliminary treatment process, we expected all the suspended uh, contaminants to, uh, will be completely removed. Only the dissolved uh, contaminants uh, or very small uh, contaminants uh, uh, left. So for small contaminants or the dissolved contaminants uh, we will let the secondary treatment uh, process uh, work on them. So that is why uh, mostly the plants, uh, we apply uh, primary treatments and secondary treatments. Mostly water treatment plants and wastewater treatment plants end up to the secondary treatments. So ordinarily pollutants are completely removed. Uh, both uh, the uh, suspended uh, or the dissolved uh, forms are completely removed. But in some special cast, in some special cast, there might be some contaminants left. There might be some uh, uh, something left, a small amount, but uh, it may cause the significant effects to the consumers. That is why we have to provide extra treatments to remove those contaminants. So extra uh, treatments, uh, normally we call the tertiary treatments, or sometimes we call the advanced water and wastewater treatments uh, process. Uh, for wastewater treatments, mostly we can remove the uh, organic uh, substance. But in some cases, if uh, still there is 
uh, nitrogen and phosphorus, if we want to remove these two uh, pollutants, we have to apply some extra process, uh, which is also part of the tertiary treatments to remove this NNP. Or uh, even uh, we already uh, removed the uh, uh, dissolved and uh, suspended uh, solids from water, but there is some uh, pollutants left, uh, the pollutants which may create uh, the taste and odor. Uh, in that case, we have to apply the adsorption process. So this adsorption is considered as the tertiary treatment uh, process. So these are three different uh, treatments uh, process. We normally classify it according to uh, the uh, the uh, contaminant uh, characteristics. So you can have a look in the details again later. And this is the uh, flow charts of the uh, wastewater treatments or the uh, biological treatment process. Wastewater treatments, they are mainly uh, apply the biological process to remove the contaminants. Uh, you will find uh, they use the uh, coarse screen, uh, grid chamber, or grid removal, and even the micro screen. So these are part of the uh, preliminary treatment process or the primary treatment process. Uh, primary settling is also part of the uh, preliminary treatment process. Okay, so this process basically remove the contaminants uh, by uh, considering or applying only the physical uh, 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 process only. Okay, uh, they don't apply any chemicals. They don't uh, allow uh, the biological reactions happen. So just uh, remove the contaminants based uh, solely on the uh, 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 physical uh, uh, process. But once all the uh, dissolved, uh, all the uh, suspended solids completely uh, removed, then only the dissolved organic matters are uh, left. So these organic matters can be uh, purified or can be removed by the uh, biological uh, process. Uh, the bacteria will do this job as I mentioned uh, in the reaction. So the bacteria, once they utilize the uh, organic matters, uh, they also grow up. We need to remove these bacteria cells from the uh, treated water. That is why we have to provide a califier or the sedimentation hang. And at the end, uh, we have to discharge the supernatants uh, to the uh, receiving uh, uh, stream. Uh, this infection may be required or may not be required for a wastewater treatment, depend on the, depending on the uh, 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 receiving uh, stream. So if the receiving, if we discharge uh, the treated uh, wastewater into the river, which pass through the city, in that case, uh, this infection may be uh, strongly recommended. But if we discharge somewhere outside or on in the downstream part, uh, this infection may not be required. So I'm talking about the wastewater. For the treated wastewater, we just dispose the treated uh, uh, water into uh, uh, the natural again. That is not required for the uh, 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 disinfections and some other process we also need to uh, apply to handle the sludge. So we will talk about this uh, uh, sludge treatments again in our next two uh, chapter. On grease removal, uh, primary settling are part of the primary treatment, rapid mixing, coagulations and flocculations, rapid mixings followed by the uh, slow mixings, uh, these are the uh, unit operation, uh, unit process uh, we use to carry out the uh, coagulations and flocculation process. Uh, iron and manganese, uh, how do we remove the iron and manganese from water? So for iron and manganese, uh, we can actually do like this. Uh, according to the chemical characteristic, we all know that the iron, the iron, uh, if you uh, uh, normally uh, the islands, if we uh, uh, withdraw the water from underground, 
the ions will completely dissolve and exist in the form of Fe2+. For manganese, also the same. They also exist in the uh, forms of Fmn2+. Uh, uh, but if we expose these two uh, with the oxygen, uh, these uh, ions uh, will react with the oxygen and becomes Fe2 or 3, and this is the precipitated forms. The same as the manganese. Uh, if we uh, expose uh, water containing uh, manganese uh, with the air, uh, we will get MnO2. This is also the precipitated forms. So once we expose the water like this, uh, we allowed uh, water passing through the tray. Uh, water is pumped from the groundwater well and then uh, flowing to uh, this unit. So water just uh, flow over this tray and then fall to the second tray and then again fall to the third tray like this. So once the water flows, so it uh, has a chance to expose it to the uh, oxygen. So oxygen can actually uh, get uh, dissolved into this water and react with the iron and manganese. So it becomes the uh, precipitated forms. That is why uh, in the next unit operation, we should actually provide uh, sedimentation tanks or any forms of tanks which allow uh, the iron and manganese precipitate. So this is the procedure. Uh, we remove uh, Fe and Mn from especially uh, ground water. From surface water, there would not be any problems because uh, water is already exposed to the oxygen. Uh, only few amount of the dissolved iron and manganese exist. Uh, for the surface water, this flow diagrams is uh, basically the same as the previous one, but just different formats. Uh, from the water resources, uh, uh, pumps uh, is used, uh, water is passing through the screen, and uh, during uh, traveling from the screen to the rapid mixing, uh, some uh, disinfectants and coagulants are added. That is why uh, the rapid mixing uh, occurs uh, in the next uh, unit processes. And next to the rapid mixing, uh, we need to provide it, uh, the slow mixing chamber. This slow mixing chamber is used to uh, promote the uh, conglomeration uh, amongst uh, the uh, colloidal particles. So such a very small particles become a bigger and then finally can uh, precipitate it to the bottoms of the chamber. OK. Uh, sometimes the pH adjustment may be required if we used uh, the uh, coagulants, which uh, really needs uh, very specific uh, the pH range, uh, low pH range or higher pH range. So before uh, uh, apply uh, before uh, processing to the next unit operations or unit processes, we need to make up the pH uh, to be in the uh, neutral range again. That is why we need to have uh, the pH adjustment uh, process after the flocculations and uh, coagulation uh, and flocculation. Our next day is the filter and uh, clear well. Uh, normally in the clear well, uh, it is the uh, chamber that we use to uh, keep the produces water. And in this chamber, we also add the choline. OK, choline is normally added in a clear well. Uh, OK, so these are all about the uh, typical uh, idea about the uh, water treatment plan. So in this afternoon, uh, I would uh, encourage you to uh, have a look at uh, the uh, video clips so you get more understanding about the uh, uh, water treatment uh, process. 
and uh, if you uh, watch uh, once you completed uh, watching the video, you can come back to these slides again and just to have a look. Uh, so how uh, the water flowing from uh, the first unit operation to the next unit operation or the uh, unit processes. OK, so just come to the preliminary treatment, which is the first uh, topics, actually the second topics to this chapter. So preliminary Preliminary treatments essentially consist of uh, the following, these following uh, 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 unit operations, all the equipment, uh, screen, commit neuter, grid removal, or increased removal. It's also part of the primary treatment process. And the last one is the pre aeration So these are the uh, unit operation, uh, unit processes, uh, uh, commonly used as the uh, primary treatment uh, process. Uh, these are the uh, figures describing uh, the applications of the primary treatment uh, uh, equipment or a unit processes. Screening, grid removal, pre aerations and foculation. So sometimes the pre aerations and foculations can also be used as the uh, 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 pre treatment uh, uh, process. Uh, okay, so we just move to the first uh, unit operations, uh, which is installed everywhere and in both uh, water and wastewater treatment plant. The objective of the screens is just to remove uh, the cost and uh, even a fight uh, objects. So these objects to get entangled in the mechanical equipment if we don't remove them. Uh, just imagine about the sands or gravel. So once it get into the pumps impeller, it may cause the damage. So if it happens uh, one or two times, it won't be creating the problems, but it, if it's always happened, uh, you will find uh, the uh, impellers are maybe uh, corroded or uh, damaged. So we have to uh, uh, remove this uh, before entering uh, to the uh, uh, pumping facilities. So some pumps, uh, they are really fractured. <laughs> so that is why uh, we have to uh, protect them. But for the larger pumps, it may be OK. Uh, the objectives of the screens, uh, yes, we remove this uh, just to protect the pumps impeller. How the screen look like? Uh, this is a photograph of the screens it uses as the uh, wastewater treatment plant. Uh, so the uh, screen is installed in the channel like this, in this channel like this. And then uh, if we take a look at the cross sections of this equipment, you will find uh, how it works. This is how it works. Uh, water just flow through uh, the channel. Water just flow through the channels. And if there is uh, the uh, objects uh, stick it onto uh, the screen. Uh, sometimes, after some times, uh, the uh, mechanical equipment, this mechanical equipment will move uh, down and then uh, remove all the trash uh, from uh, uh, water. This is how does a screen work. And there is also uh, one issue relating, uh, regarding to the design of the uh, screens. Uh, the designing of the screens, uh, you may have to uh, consider the head uh, difference between uh, 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 before entering uh, the screens and after entering the screens. So anything we put it in a waterway, in a piping system or in the channel, it will always create the head loss. OK, even uh, these uh, screens, uh, it will also create the head lost. So according, in fact, this figure is not uh, completely uh, correct. If you really take a look at the water levels, 
you will find water levels is a, a, a upstream to the screen is a few uh, millimeters above the uh, uh, the water levels uh, after passing uh, the screen. Uh, this few millimeters uh, difference is actually due to uh, the screen. Uh, anything which blocked uh, the waterway, we always create the heat loss. This one is also same thing. So now, uh, unfortunately, it is the time that I really need to lift. Uh, if uh, it is possible, uh, I will uh, make a video clip uh, regarding to the uh, screen and probably grid chamber so that uh, if you have time, you can uh, have a look again later. Uh, I really need to leave now. Uh, do you have any question regarding to the today's lectures or maybe some other things, other issue related to uh, the uh, class? Do you have any questions?